Hello everyone, and welcome back to Best in Class Episode 4. I'm James McCracken, Battle Mech Extraordinaire, and Head of Operations here at the BIC Testing Centre. As always, I'm assisted by my able lab monkey, Eddie the Ferret Hodge. And today, we have an episode so jam-packed with my Oma Bundle goodness that we've had to split it into two edible viewing chunks for your good selves watching here in the Inner Sphere and Periphery. Tonight, Best in Class brings you the following 35-ton menagerie. The Adder. Some off-handedly call it the Badder due to a lack of wit, but anyone with a brain, even one as small as Eddie's, will know that the Adder is a sublime clan-light Omnimac. Powerful arm-mounted ERPPCs make short work if anyone foolish enough to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this little fellow. Just make sure to watch your heat. The Cougar. The Adder's brother, built before the Battle of the Coventry, this Jade Falcon side grade of the Adder also runs a tad hot, but again brings the pain in the form of two large pulse lasers and two LRM-10s. Though has to be said, the speed's a little wanting. Not too dissimilar from Eddie, really. The Firestarter, a twisted little light built to combat infantry formations in urban centres and other built-up locations. Given the reputation this mech has, it can be used tactically to create fires to obscure vision or deny the enemy access to areas to prevent flanking, or even retreat. The Jenner, a popular light mostly seen in the Combine military these days, though it has been in service pretty much everywhere. Compact, fast, and powerful, there isn't much to complain about when it comes to the Jenner. Maybe there isn't enough of them? The Jenna 2C. So popular, the clans made their own version. Just as fast, but now more focused on flinging missiles at everything. Personally, I think they took a step back with the Jenna, more than forwards. Will testing prove me wrong? Unlikely. The Panther. Perfection in battle mech form. The Panther is a mech myself, and Eddie agree, is one of the best battle mechs that have ever been produced. There's my pick to win today. The Raven. The Capellan-made Raven is one of the most interesting mechs to have been born from the chaos of the Succession Wars. The Raven put everyone on notice when it first broke its ECM cover. Sporting a plethora of advanced equipment, which I'm sure they must have stolen to begin with, it quickly gained a rep as one of the most effective scouts in the sphere. The Wolfhound. What are you going to do when the hounds are calling? A rare collaborative work between the Lyrans and Kelhounds. The Wolfhound is a powerful light that saw extensive combat against the Curetans and later the clans certainly want to watch and here we are and uh let's wait for it wait for it wait here for it everybody go, wait for it and they're off. off king crab sounding the alarm there as the racers charge down the field and talk about sounding look at that jenna 2c go quickly followed by its old relative the jenna there with the raven doing its best, but it just can't keep up. Well, the fire stars and all found neck and neck getting there toward the finish, but I think we'll be able to succinctly uh. say that the fire starter was just edged out by the wolfhound as the adder and cougar bring up the rear. And oh, the panther. Oh, well. Well, as that race ends, we'll go over to the standings as Let's we. Let's see what the scores on the doors are. Here we are. And uh, that's it for your viewing pleasure as it wobbles into shot. And uh, we'll be taking it over to our next segment now, won't we, Eddie? We certainly will. You know, some people say that he reinvented the Lost Star League food known as baked beans. Mm. And that his skin is made of ferrofibrous. I don't know about that, but I do know we call him Critical Rocket. Well, here he is. It's Rocket again. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. I don't know why we trust him in the simulator, to be honest. It's, I think it's mainly due to the budget cuts. But he's, he's cheap. He's incredibly cheap. Incredibly cheap. A uh, pizza and a Coke. It's all he needs. Uh, although he has uh, muffled to me in his uh, broken dialect, uh, only a scant few, such as your, your good self and the, the boffins and me, understand that he does actually quite like the adder. Does he? Yeah, although he is a, an outspoken critic of the clans, he does tend to find that running the adder is a, is a genuine joy. I mean, I think that's what he was saying. He could have also been saying that he was having some kind of conniption fit and required medical assistance, I honestly couldn't tell. It's difficult to know sometimes. It's difficult to know between the grunts and and squeaks and... Yes. Yeah. It also doesn't help that he... Uh, apparently, uh, prior to going into the simulator, he put on his coolant suit backwards and upside down. I'm not quite sure how, but he did it. Right. Okay. But well, there you go. That's Critical Rocket for you. 
Yes, this is the level of skill and competency that we have to work with here at BIC. That said, the adder. Eddie, what do you think of the, uh, the little fellow? Well, there's no point in denying that, obviously, the clans know how to build their mechs, as mm. much as I despise every last one of them. Oh, well said, Eddie, well said. But they do know how to build a mech, and the Adder is certainly one of the ones that's up there. I mean, she's fast, she's not too fast. Uh, fast enough to get herself into a situation and relatively out. Mm. She's not the kind of thing that, obviously, you use as a scout mech. Most certainly not. Oh, definitely not. She's there to get into some nasty little trouble, and she carries, a, in this particular configuration, some nasty trouble getting into weapons. Those clan ERPPCs really are not anything to laugh at. No, definitely not. Uh, a very, very high-impact uh, alpha strike from this mech uh, can very easily down other light mechs in the Inner Sphere, or even in the clan's own uh, Tauman, uh, easily in one shot. And uh, it's more than e easily able uh, to uh, deal with the heat that generates uh, per shot. It's it's a remarkable weapon, uh, it's this platform, honestly. And the other configurations are, are fairly decent, but I always find that the, the Prime is probably where it's at with the Adder. Also, as a, as a note, it's yeah. known as the, as the Puma over here in the Inner Sphere. The Puma? Or Puma. As, Puma as, as, as a... Some, <laughs> as a, as a, some of as our Davian, shall we say Davian? <laughs> Davian. Davian. Dav Davian, yes. Davian cousins might say. Might say, might say. Yes, uh, I, I do have to agree with Rocket and yourself that the, the Adder is certainly a simple, straightforward, reliable choice for, uh, for the budding simulator pile out there. Or oh, any of those lucky enough to uh, actually get one of these as salvage, it's a relatively uh, efficient quick and easy to handle mech. Uh, it also comes with a bonus flamer located in the uh, centre torso. Flamer? Well, that's interesting. Although Rocket seems to, well, make little to no use of it during this fight, which makes me wonder whether the flamer's really there to uh, engage in mechs, or is it primarily to deal with any uh, pesky ground forces, like those damn annoying toad elementals? Mm, could be, could be. I'm not sure, honestly, how much uh, use the uh, clans get for it, but Rocket's using the flamethrower now, and he's using it to marginal effect. It's a cold map, so maybe that's the reason it doesn't get as much use as it probably should. But the, uh, the, the stalker, they're getting a good drubbing before it went down. He was unlucky not to get the kill, but at the end of the day, those PPCs are good, but there's a few seconds delay between being able to fire them again, and that might have just caused him to uh, lose that kill. Well, Rocket losing a kill isn't anything new, really, is it? No, no, it is no, not. It's not. Now, <laughs> as he ineptly tries to chase down an Uzeel uh, across, Uzeel. which we will be seeing in a future episode of Best in Class, the uh, the Uzeel, the Uzi, the Uzi, Uzi, nine millimeter. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. That's, that's a, it's copyright, copyright. Really. Ah, yes, we don't want to get picked up on the Trivid uh, copyright claims there. Not with uh, the, well. Terra's most famous Shakespearean actor. And speaking of action, it's all over by the looks of this, because uh, I'm wondering whether they're going to be able to win this. Well, with Rocket helping the team, and helping is very loosely used here, I highly <laughs> doubt they're going to win. The point differential at the top is just too high. Yes. The team yes. focused too heavily on trying to get the kills rather than playing the objective. And of course, that's what his opponents have done very aptly. They use the rest of the team as meat shields, absorbing the impact, getting killed, but slowly in the process, one by one, allowing the rest of the team to capture those key points, the oil derricks. Is there a reason why they're oil derricks? I, I don't know why they're called derrick. But uh, it seems to me that uh, Rocket was only really interested in trying to get those kills here, rather than actually necessarily supporting his team in getting these oil derricks. These oil Stevens. These oil bills. Oil yes. bills. And uh, it's, as soon as the uh, the boff in here uh, gives me the uh, the final uh, sheet, as we can uh, see that the the match score and the the damage will be coming in soon at the end of this sim run uh, for the adder, and we'll be able to uh, to see just how well uh, Rocket did. And again, well is a very relative term; we're not quite sure. But there we go; the match is over. As we go over to the match score screen, we can have a look as soon as the simulator decides to. Finally, it's very slow. It's very, it's slow. very old, old tech. Old, old, old tech. Old. There we go. Damage, 421. Respectable damage. 
and a match score nice. of 339. Not bad. Not bad at all. And sticking with the clans, here we go over with the Cougar, the brother of the Adder, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction. It was built uh, just prior to the Battle of Coventry by uh, Jade Falcon as a, a means to replace their, uh, well, admittedly depleted military forces in that era. Yes, the clans found that the Inner Sphere weren't quite the pushover that they'd perhaps been led to believe. Perhaps by those uh, damnable uh, wolf dragoons who just <laughs> roamed around the Inner Sphere sending back valuable intel about our defences. <laughs> <laughs> How trustworthy they are. Uh, indeed, indeed. Almost as trustworthy as Rocket around a uh, multi-packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody else's pizza. But, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. This is a pretty impressive mech, though, all being said. Uh, like, as you said, it's, uh, it's Adder Friend. This can be quite a nasty, devastating little bastard on the battlefield. Though Indeed. Those LRMs allow it to keep considerable range and just spray down just enough damage to really, really soften up that armour for the bigger boys to start tearing into. And those large pulse lasers are nothing to laugh at. They're not. However, it does have the drawback that it is relatively slow, possibly slower than the Adder, and uh, it generates far more heat, and with two weapons that rely entirely on ammunition, its uh, slight edge advantage there in range originally gets depleted rather fast compared to the Adder, where it doesn't have to worry about ammunition and can keep firing all day long. Saying that though, I, I gotta give something to Rocket here. He's doing a reasonably good jo job of actually just staying back, using those LRMs to support his uh, his teammates, raining down damage uh, on top of the damage that they're doing. Well, let's face it, he's found his niche, stand on a hill, and fire missiles. It's not difficult. Anyone could do it. Even you could do it, Eddie. Standing there, <laughs> lock on, and just press the big red button to fire missiles. <laughs> Thank you for that, my colleague. No problem, my colleague. However, staying on that hill may now not be the best thing for him to do. And yes, it seems he's realised to say, oh my goodness, he's taking a few... Uh, he's dropping in front of assault mechs, it's never a good idea. That's not a clever idea. It's not. It, he stayed there a little too long, and he has depleted a lot of that LRM ammo. As you said, it goes quickly. And then all he's got... Well, those two clan pulse lasers are still devastating weapons. But they produce a hell of a lot of heat. Even on a cold map like this, Eddie, it's it's a major drawback of the design. Uh, possibly chain fire will help with this, but I'm not entirely sure that that would help, especially a pilot as inept as Rocket. But uh, even in the hands of a skilled pilot, you don't have to watch running that red line. Fortunately, though, it looks like uh, his team have done a majority of the work and are now in a mop-up stage, I'd say, at this point. Yeah, yeah, it certainly looks that way. I think the Cougar, as you said, it's slower, and it seems to have a little bit of an issue trying to handle the heat with these weapons, but still, this is a devastating little mech, and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to run into one of them in a dark alley. <laughs> well... Uh, it's, it's testament to show how simple and straightforward the design is to use, because even Rocket seems to be, and it's rare that we'll give him this, he seems to be doing Okay. Okay, I think is as far as we'd like to go with this. Just above average, but only slightly. His performance here is uh, is definitely not something to, to shrug off. As, and uh, uh, it looks the... like our match is coming very close to the end here. The enemy is uh, being whittled down to the last... Well, oh, we the last few. even got a kill. My goodness, is that real? It's such a rarity to see here and best in class. You can't always yes, be sure with these old simulators. It could be glitchy. <laughs> we'll get the boffins to double check whether that was actually Rocket's kill. But this is the last one here, the Rifleman 2C, as we... Come down into the final shots, and oh. the the AI is very weird. The AI is useless runs across sometimes. line of but, fire. But let's. What what would the scores on the doors be for this? Because that looked pretty impressive. Well, looking at the damage I mean, here for as rocket. the as the system loads in, as we've got a match score of three o uh, three twenty one, and we've got a damage of five hundred and eight. Impressive stuff. Impressive indeed. Not bad. Not bad at all. Good damage. Good damage. And now over to the Firestarter, a mech with a grim and somewhat dubious reputation. 
Firestarter, Twisted Firestarter. Yes, you're quite right, this is not really built for fighting other mechs. I'm afraid this was built for killing ground troops. Yes, cooking, roasting people alive, setting vehicles ablaze, and generally just uh, being a, a terror mech, really. And urban combat, uh, definitely its forte. Yeah, she's also used quite often when uh, you're in much more green uh, planets. Not for uh, long. Not for long with the fire starter, though. It very, ter very, very quickly turns an orangely red. Yes, crisping up everything reminds me of, well, some of the early days of the uh, Fourth Succession War with the fires raging everywhere. Yes, the fire starter is a, a tactical tool as well. Although it has a grim reputation, it can be used to create diversionary fires, uh, smoke screens, it can be used to prevent flanking operations by enemy forces through wooded and forested terrain. It has been used in a myriad of different ways over the centuries of its use, and it's uh, a good reason that it's stayed around in the Inner Sphere uh, as long as it has, despite the fact that it's a mech that's not really intended to go against other battle mechs one-on-one, -on -one, it's not incapable, but it certainly struggles. Yeah, I would agree with that, my colleague. Um, though, of course, every, any mech pilot worth their salt, even one as bad as Critical Rocket, who, who only pilots mechs in a simulator, would know that getting one of these things behind you will very quickly start to raise your heat. And those two medium lasers can still scratch a fair amount of armour off, even on a clan mech, but the fact of the matter is, she just isn't built for those stand-up brawls. Yes, yes, and if you're wondering, the, the simulator has an issue with uh, projecting fire, we're not quite sure. We did have a nice flame effect once, uh, about a few years ago with the simulator, it looked very nice, it looked like actual fire, and then one of the boffins said that it just didn't quite work properly for them, and so they turned it into this weird straight line. So if you're confused as to why fire looks like a laser cannon, uh, blame the boffins, because apparently they said it would work better that way. I don't know why. Yeah, th that's something to do with Comstar. We're not Comstar affiliated specifically, so I'd send all of your complaints to them via... Um, <coughs> uh, it's uh, one Demi present or something. Can you read this handwriting? Uh, old, old, old man. Old man. Yeah. Demi presenter old man for your complaints. But getting back anyway, as you say, the Firestarter not built for uh, really fighting other mechs, but... Uh, that said, she has been involved in a number of very nasty engagements over the the time span of the Succession Wars. Well, yes, uh, from the Curitan Lyran border conflicts to mm. the Lao and uh, Davian uh, conflicts mm. that have raged for many a year, even uh, heavily used within the periphery, as I said, as a terror unit. It's, mm. uh, it's one that's had numerous uh, dubious uh, records used by pirate groups. Uh, less than salubrious mercenaries and the like. De anyone who can find a use for this mech generally finds something rather sinister to use the Firestarter for, and it has a reputation amongst uh, the uh, the more uh, scum and villainous types, let's say, uh, around the Inner Sphere uh, for such uses. Personally, for me, it's one that I do have in the collection. I do have it in storage. It's one that's actually a, a, a captured relic from Red Jack Ryan's crew, believe it or not. Wow, I would have seen, imagined that seen some pretty devastating things done with those fire, uh, flamers. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't have one in my collection. No? I do not. I'm no. very surprised. Uh, I don't know. that. As you said, there's something about the fire starter. Now, I am not, uh, we are not, I should uh, deign to mention, we are not necessarily suggesting that every fire starter pilot uses those flamers in anything other than... Uh, acceptable battle conditions that they don't break any of the uh, the warfare codes the, the, the Ares conventions or any of that kind of stuff but unfortunately this mech has a reputation and it's difficult to get past that and I believe there are some pilots who find it very uncomfortable to find themselves into the controls of one of these mechs some more comfortable than others but there have even been uh, rumours of mech pilots refusing to take on such a mech when they've, there's been nothing else to take. I've heard of some of them even uh, taking, uh, well, a standard Irby over this. Uh, it's harsh words and a harsh criticism for a mech that probably doesn't really deserve it. But, uh, I mean, I've 
on, on a lighter note, I, I have seen Rocket uh, uh, occasionally using the Flamers on his to uh, mass cook Pop Tarts. You know? <laughs> Uh, for, uh, for everybody at the facility, I mean, he does have his uses. He does have his uses, but uh, the use for this mech, I f- suspect, is coming very close to the end for this bat, this particular match, and it's not gone too badly for him. The mech's taken a considerable beating, but she's still in there. And I have to say that is one thing you can say about this mech: she has stayed the test of time, maneuverable, fairly well armed for its job. And a decent armor, yes, I'd have to agree. And as we get to the very end of the uh, the battle here, as the uh, friendly uh, AI have captured the center point on domination, we get the final scores, on which the doors. ring in as, let's see, uh, 160 damage, 261 match score. It's not special. And so we take it over to our final mech of part one, the Jenna. And the name for the Jenna is derived from an ancient Terran word meaning adequate, which is exactly how I describe the Jenna. It's a perfectly adequate light, adequately armed, adequately move mobile, adequately jump capable, adequately armored. It's it's distinctly adequate. Well, okay. I mean, this is a reasonably popular mech in a number of houses. I mean, she's reasonably fast, which means she can scout adequately fast. Ad- adequately fast. She can scout a bit, and her weapons are nothing to sniff at. That uh, SRM certainly can dish out a reasonable amount of damage. Adequate amount of damage for an adequate amount of space <sighs> and an adequate recon ability. Look, we're well aware that you're not a fan of the Jenna. It's not that I dislike it, I just find it distinctly adequate. I just don't see why this is a problem for you to understand, Eddie. I, I mean, I've yes, I'm well aware. You've, you've mentioned this before. We've had a number of conversations. I, I don't know what your particular... Uh, attitude towards the Jenner is, I, th- I find her uh, quite a good mech. Well, you would, Eddie. That's that's not surprising, and it's 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 not surprising to me at all, Eddie. You, you always have to be the contrarian. You always have to see the, the mechs that have the faults, and then you have to say, oh, well, they're very good. Oh, they're very good, James. Yeah, you just can't see, can you, James? Look, oh, I'm, it's very terrible. I'm not trying to be contrarian, as you said there, my colleague. What I'm trying to say is that the Jenna is a pretty good mech. Hell, even the clans decided to bring it back with their 2C, which we'll be seeing in part two. Indeed, and that will be a distinctly adequate clan 2C mech as well. It, it, it looks ridiculous, Eddie. It's sat there with its long head protruding like some kind of turtle neck head thing extending out of a shell with its spindly legs and a very flat rear torso. It's very, very badly designed. The idea that any light pilot would be happy running around in this distinctly adequate light mech, it, it completely baffles me, Eddie. I just don't understand why the Jenna is still in active use. Well, that's right, you don't understand, do you? The, the truth of the matter is that uh, this mech has a number of high-mounted weapons, both its SRM and its four medium lasers, meaning it can do a very nice little pop-up, fire, and pop back down again, which is above adequate, because especially clearly, considering a lot of the clan mechs have rather low-slung weaponry. Because clearly, at some point in the design process, someone went, hang on a minute. This is distinctly adequate. We need to do something with the weapons, maybe make them high up so it can give it some kind of illusion of being half decent in a combat scenario. Destroyed. <sighs> you know what? I, I, I really not sure even I want to Rocket's get back into Even Rocket's struggling with it here. Even Rocket... Is, and, and, and you give him the easiest high mount weapons and he, he still struggles. Because well, I would say that's as much to do with his team rushing off in the wrong direction, personally. But The, the counter-rotating the here, yes. The AI has obviously had one of its its infamous bugs where they've it's decided to send the AI around in a big circle around each other and then one of them has glitched out and gotten stuck on the hill and the others have, been, have gone back into their aggressive mode. This is true. But even with the barely human pilot in the form of Rocket here with the Jenna, you can still see that it, it just, just doesn't match up. I mean, it just... It's ridiculous, Eddie. Look... Stupid. Uh, what, Completely stupid, Eddie. What, whatever your opinions are of the Jenna, I, I don't know whether you were bitten by one as a child or something like that. Oh, the, very, very droll, Eddie, very droll. But the, the fact of the matter is the Jenna is a good mech. It's a popular mech, and it does its job well. well po- popular, with who? popular with who, Eddie? Considering the Draconis Combine. 
considering it's a 35 tonner and in our race it came second beaten only by its own clan variant so they put a big engine in it you put a big engine in any mech it doesn't necessarily make it yes good. but unlike the charger this one actually brings a reasonable amount of firepower with it well you're going to bring the charger into it which yes does i'm really mentioning that just because you bring put you're a big jumping engine way in. ahead eddie we're I'm so far away from even being able to look be in a the point to discuss the, the charger. point is yes you can put a big engine in something this has a big engine and it has half decent weaponry. And compared to some of the other mechs, such as those clan ones, which obviously bring things like pulse larges and ERPPCs. He's dead! <sighs> he exploded midair. He probably wasn't even killed by one of the enemy AI. He was his mech probably just realized how inadequate it is in its job and just decided to spontaneously combust and fall to the ground, Eddie. I, I, I guarantee you that the, the score is not going to blow you away in any way, shape, or form here. Well, perhaps not, because it's being piloted by a monkey, but that's not the point. What is this thing doing? Did the AI go completely bananas? This thing's... it's I, all over the place. It, it, it does seem a little bit... Uh, a, a little bit odd. It's looking at a building... Yeah, anyway, anyway, look, we're, we're coming up to the end of the first half. Yes, and, yes uh, we are. So what, what are the scores on this? Well, uh, the Jenna's overall score, as soon as the simulation uh, finishes running here, uh, should be coming in as the as the boffins are just telling the system to fire up the score any time now. And here we go. We've got a s damage is three twenty one and a match score of two forty five. That's actually not bad. Ridiculous. I'd say above average. Ridiculous. Above Eddie. ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, well, that's all we've got time for in this episode, but we'll be back pretty soon with the other half of in Best in Class. Including that Jenna 2C, I uh, should point out. Yes, yes, the Jenna 2C, alongside the Wolfhound, the Panther, and the Raven, and a cat in the background. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.